Hello, my darlings, and welcome back to This is Maria. The topic for today is the mystery of your own name. Specifically, how much significance your higher self, your soul, puts into what to name you. How much control it has over what you're going to be named, or is this a random occurrence, and also the energy of your name. All of that and more in this episode. Before we dive in, I wanted to take a quick moment to invite you to an upcoming healing circle that I would be doing. This is all about the womb healing. So we're going to heal the sacral chakra, and that is probably mostly for women. And it's going to be a deep journey uh, in June that we're going to go on together. And through this journey, you are going to understand what type of trauma is stuck in your womb and how that is preventing you from the life that you want. So a lot of wounds of motherhood, a lot of wounds of sexuality, a lot of wounds of creativity, I hear. All of your past relationships dwell right there, uh, intimate relationships, that is. Anything around a miscarriage, an abortion, even if that was in your lineage and not with you, all of these things and more can really have an impact on the health of your sacral. And so we're going to meet in the circle, in the sacred circle, uh, with the intention of healing that. So I invite you and all of the details are on thisismaria.com. All right. The mystery of the name. This is kind of a fun topic. That is what we're diving into. I don't think it would be a surprise for those of you that have listened or have been listening to me for a while that names are not random. In fact, nothing is. Your higher self goes to great length to plan everything around your upcoming incarnation. And that planning is quite meticulous. So your higher self is very particular around which parents it wants to be born to, what country, what city et cetera, et cetera, the level of income of your parents, what traumas they have, et cetera. So everything is done, you know, in accordance with the vibrational law, the law of resonance, right? So there must be a resonance between how your higher self feels and the experiences that it is looking for and what your current family can provide. Interestingly enough, the selection of the name is just as important as the selection of the birthday, if not more important in some ways, because a lot of your identity, right? A lot of your ego, ego is a fixed identity, is going to be built around your name, whether you realize this or not. Some of your major traumas can become very apparent through how you feel about your name, whether you accept your name or you don't. For the people that don't love their name, it is usually an aspect within themselves that they are denying. So essentially, any time you display any kind of discomfort with your own name, it is your resistance to a part within you or your decision to not want to meet yourself fully. Otherwise, you couldn't possibly align to a name that you don't resonate with or you don't vibrate at. Our names are the keys to our powers. Our names usually point to our greatest talents if we know how to decipher the code. Our name is first and foremost a sound frequency that we associate ourselves with and that others are going to identify us with. So essentially, it becomes our most important sound frequency. Your name is probably the most important sound in your life. So. It is with great deliberation that your higher self um, chooses your name. That re refers to both the first name and the last name, as well as any shifts in either of those that you are going to undergo uh, during your incarnation. Meaning, if you change your last name because you married or you got married, that is also factored in. Because when you change your name, your vibration changes. Not only that. Your name, through the vowels and the consonants in the name, through the letters in the name, connects you to certain aspects of universal flow, universal energy, if you will. And because you're so attached in, in a good way to your name, you have a claim over those energies. In other words, whatever letters you have in the name, each letter of your name is like an energy portal. And 
through that energy portal, you can connect to various energies within the universe. And it is almost like you have a cord um, that attaches you to those energies and you can tap into them and draw them into your body anytime you want. So your name can be your greatest resource. Now, when you shift your name, if you're not shifting um, energies um, to your benefit, you may lose some of the edge or you may lose some of the energy resource. But make no mistake, every single time you change your name, legally and um, as far as like what you in your mind are referring to yourself as, like whatever you think is your last name, right? Because sometimes passports also don't matter. It's like, who do you like resonate with? Like, what is your true name? And there's usually one, one first name, one last name, the middle name as well. There's not multiple, right? For a female who got married, she either associates herself with a maiden name energy or with her husband's last name. It's usually not both unless both last names are kept, right? That would be the only caveat. And of course, there are some women that do that. There are some people that do that, I should say. Um, because of that, right, uh, your name, because of how much significance each letter in the name has energetically, you already come with a predetermined set of resources, set of blessings, if you will, into this incarnation. If in your name you have letters that are duplicate, meaning you have the same letter over and over again, even if it's double or triple, definitely if it's uh, you know quadruple, uh, the energy meaning um, you have it four times or three times or even two times, that energy in you is amplified, right? So if I was reading your energy, I would look at every repeating letter first, and that is how I would try to dissect the gifts the blessings and the curses, right, that you came with, because each letter has its light side, it's, each letter has its shadow side, if you will, right? And while, you know, while you're tapping into that resource, depending on um, your karma, depending on your vibration, you may be teetering, you know, and swinging from one facet of the letter to another. Sometimes you display the entire spectrum, now, it really does depend, right? So pay attention specifically to the double letters because those are usually your core energies. Your higher self always wants to make sure that your special talents are encoded in the letters of your own name, meaning you're not energies of the universe are not randomly attached to your body. They are attached because they are needed for you to be on your way or on your path and they also reflect who you are, right? So it's kind of like, that's where we close the circle. So by understanding all the letters in your name, you would be able to understand what kind of imprint or blueprint you have shown up with. There are a few big generalizations I want to give you. All of the vowels, the A's, the O's, the I's, the E's, all of the vowels that can be in your name are open energies. They are more flowy. They act a lot more like the feminine energies. So they are pure energy and life force, if you will. It's different facets of life force, but it's life force nonetheless. So if you have a lot of vowels in your first and last name, that means that you have brought with yourself a lot of energy of the universe. Neither of these letters, neither of these vowels, because it's energy, as opposed to consonants. Consonants are, I mean, obviously everything is energy, but consonants are a lot more stable. They're a very stable resource, and it's almost like it's a lot easier to say what, what each of the consonants represents, right? It's kind of like a fixed boxed energy that you really, really need. Whereas the vowels are life force that you can put to any project and morph into anything that you need. I guess the better way to explain this would be that, you know, your vowels um, are like water, like liquid life force, and you can reroute that water towards whatever outcome you want. In other words, um, all of your vowels are the building blocks, the material with which you can create something in your life. All of the consonants are your foundation. All of the consonants are the things that are inherently true about you. For those of you that are familiar with human design, there is this concept of an open energy center versus a defined energy center. So 
A defined, a consonant is like a defined energy center. It is an energy, a very fixed energy that you bring with you. And no, ma no matter what, you're going to emanate that energy until and unless you change the name. Vowels are like open energy centers, meaning it is your life force that you have, but they don't define you per se. They just define how much um, free energy you have to wield, right? So it's great to have vowels because they reflect your power, but it's like an open-ended power. It's almost like a vowel is the beginning of the conversation. And it is almost like a question for you to explore what is it that you really love about life and like which direction you want to move. Consonants in your name are a lot more sturdy. They're like building blocks. They're like foundations. They're like bricks <laughs> or pillars, if you will, upon which your identity is built. Um, like I said, those things don't change. The only thing you can change is whether you are operating within the shadow of that frequency or the light of that frequency. Now, taking a step back maybe from a very loaded and a very rich topic of the energy of each letter, which I'm getting a lot of questions from the collective right now. All of you want to understand what is this energy that, you know, that your name has. All of you got really, really, really curious. I, I feel called to make other videos for you on that topic, diving into each letter and the energy of each letter, because that will help you understand what resources you came with. But this is not what this video is all about. This video is all about just giving you an understanding that you're name is not random. Let us dive into something that I said earlier, right? So there are, I would say, two types of people. Um, if we were to, as it relates to the name, the people that really love their name and the people that really don't and want it to be named something else. What I invite you to do right now is a quick diagnostic. I want you to say, I am, and then follow on with a name, like your own name. Like in, in my case, I would say, I am Maria. And then what you want to do afterwards, once you say your name and do so out loud, feel where into your body, like where in your body you're perceiving your name. It's almost like your name is going to drop somewhere and it's going to cause a sensation in your body. When you say, I am X, like I am Maria or like I am whatever is the name, uh, Whatever energy drops in your body is actually a really quick giveaway around how you feel partially about yourself or the aspect of yourself that is represented by the name. If you get warm fuzzies or if you get a feeling of expansion when, when you say your name or if you just feel like energy is moving freely through your body, that is a sign that you are congruent with your name. There is no resistance that your being has to your name. Most people are not going to sense that. Most people are going to sense some type of discomfort when they say their name. Somewhere in their body, something would feel heavy or something would, would feel spiky or it would feel like just pain, right? It is because a lot of people live their lives being fractured, right? That's why we have to do parts work, right? There are so many parts within yourself and all of these many archetypes that the chance that there's like a very, very big chance that at least one aspect of you, if not multiple aspects of you, is not in congruent vibration, is not in resonance with your name. And so they start resisting it. And if a part of you resists your name, they also resist your path that you are on because your name is a reflection of your path, of your incarnation, of your intention for this incarnation. And that is where the going becomes harder, right? Because you are not fully aligned that the North is the North and the South is the South and you're here for why you're here. It is, it's that inner tension, right, that is problematic potentially. So what I invite you to do is, if you're feeling this tension in your body, I invite for you to examine it further. Because very often, we don't really look at the incongruent parts of ourselves. We run away from them. We don't want to see them. We don't want to give them airtime. We want to pretend that they don't exist for whatever reason, 
right? Because those parts of us are less savory or perhaps are not on board with our missions or perhaps they did something in the past and would rather uh, forget about, etc., etc. There could be many reasons why you may be in resistance to one or multiple parts of you. And so if you're starting to sense this discomfort in your body when you say, I am X, I am Maria, or I am someone else, like insert your name, it is an invitation for you to explore that part of you that is feeling pain and somehow is not aligned with your name. And one way to do that is by like dropping into this part of you, that part of your body and examining what is actually happening there. Anytime you do parts work, it's important for you to let the part of you that is showing up, let them know that you see them. So literally what you should say is, I see you. I feel you. At that time, you may start getting a whiff of why they're not uh, loving the name, your name. Now, some of you may already have that answer, right? Like right away, some of you may have hated your name from birth and wanted to change it, and some of you have changed it, etc. Net net, if you have any resistance to your name, it is your resistance to you or a version of you. It is not your resistance to your parents. It is not your resistance to your government. It is not resistance to anything else. It is a disharmony within you, right? So diving into the part of you that hates your name could be an incredibly cathartic experience. It could be, um, it could be life-changing. So that's that about the name. Um, going back to vowels and consonants for, for a quick second. When your higher self picks your name, it is very particular around which consonants it wants to give you. Because again, that is fixed energy that you cannot change if you tried. Maybe you can slightly even out its impact. But every single consonant in your first name and your last name is definitely going to impact your energy and therefore your destiny or your future. There are some consonants that are harsher than the others. There are some very gentle consonants. For example, the letter M is very connected to the motherly aspect or the mothering energies or the nurturing energies. So if you have the letter M in oh, like anywhere in your first or last name, that is usually that need, that motivation, that drive to help others and mother another being, right, through whichever means. So it's a very motherly energy. Again, if that is your fixed energy, and a, a con the consonants almost always are, you couldn't shake this off if you tried. Like that type of energy, you couldn't shake, shake it off if you tried. Um, it would be quite uh, hard for you. But that is just like one quick example, right? With uh, vowels, they are a lot less dogmatic, right? Like a vowel is purely life force. However, it's interesting, right? Despite the fact that you carry all of these energies, you may still be in resistance to them, right? And if you are in resistance to one of your core emanations, one of your core energies, your life would be hard. For example, letter A, which is very common in a lot of people, is all about expansion. Um, it's all about growth. It's all about amplifying something, making something bigger, improving something. It's, it's that forward momentum, it's that forward movement. So if you have a lot of A's in your name, that means that you're not meant to sit still. You're meant to explore and be out there and, and be ignited uh, and just um, grow things. Whatever that is, it could be growing vegetables in your garden. It could be growing your children and nurturing them. It could be growing companies. It could be growing a movement. Like it could be growing some creative artistic endeavors or projects of yours. A is the letter of growth and expansion. O, for instance, is all about community. O, and it even you can even tell, like it's a circle, right? So it's all about interconnectedness of things. It's all about interrelation. Um, it's all about relationships. So people with a lot of O's or even a single O in their name are relationship people. They really care about the relationships in their lives. And it's almost like they're not meant to stand on their own. They are meant to be a part of the group, right? So if you have a lot of O's, do pay attention. Now, it feels like I would probably 
want to make um, additional videos around this. So if you would like for me to dive into the energy of letters, please drop me a comment on YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube, and I will make sure to create more videos for you because it seems like um, there is a lot of interest and that information is really hard to come by. So let me know if you're curious and I'm, I'm happy to dive deeper. In other words, don't treat your name lightly, right, as I'm stepping back. Don't treat your name lightly. It's not a random thing. It is a gift from your higher self, and it is a direct, almost like dead giveaway of who you are as a person. And the name is a layered, almost like a sentient being. And it is a very consolidated energy form that definitely does have an impact on your life and on your future. I wanted to see if the collective had any questions for me, and I'm sensing this one question really strong already. So the question is, if I don't feel a resonance with my name, is it okay to change it? If I hate my name, what do I do? Two things I will tell you. The first thing that I would do if you hate your name is I would try to understand what is it about your name that you hate? Right? Like, what is the energy that you think that name carries that you don't like? Because you are incredibly intuitive and you haven't been hating on your name for no reason. It is because you, with your extrasensory abilities that you may or may not be aware that you have, have picked up on the vibration of the name and you consider that foreign to yourself. And so a part of you or all of you wants to repel it and say, that's not me. I am here to tell you that your higher self did not randomly pick that name for you, but rather it wanted you to start integrating those energies or more importantly, probably stop repelling them. So what is it that your name represents to you energetically if you hate it? And what aspect of that energy are you rejecting? And whichever aspect that you're rejecting, you're rejecting within yourself. So some of you may think, oh, like it's a name like a weak person would be called that. Um, or I don't know, like um, a lot of women actually feel like their names um, sound promiscuous almost or like only um, <laughs> what, what is the politically correct way of phrasing this? Um, only somebody who would sell their body for money would be called that way. So that's actually a very common thing with women. So what you need to explore is your relationship with sexuality, if that is the case. And there's probably some past life in there where um, you had a particular occupation. In this case, it could have been a prostitute, right? There is a resistance to, to that, right? And a hurt and a lot of pain. And I'm not saying every girl who feels her name is reflective of that energy has had that sexual trauma, but it is definitely an energy that you are repelling. When you're repelling something, it is division, right? Division always leads to trauma. Division always leads to pain. Sometimes it leads to suffering, it leads to disease, it leads to a lot of different things, right? So what I invite you to do is meet parts of yourself that you're rejecting, and your name could just be a doorway. For either one of you, whether you love your name, though, or you hate your name, what could be interesting is when you just pronounce your name it could be super interesting and fun for you to just write down the associations you have with a name, right? So like if you saw that name, not on you, right, but like out there in the ether, somebody else was called by your name, what would you think of, to be true about that person? And just make a list, right? All of the words that come to your mind, it's a free writing exercise. It's an automated writing exercise. The good, the bad, the ugly, what would you think about a person named that? Interestingly enough, what you would find out is that you are spot on and you're picking up on the energies of the name pretty, pretty well. And that could be a way for you to find out what is the energy that your higher self has sent you here through um, with the help of that name. But going back to the question from the audience, like, what if you hate your name? If after doing parts work and after, you know, an exercise of accepting the aspect um, of energy that you think your your name symbolizes. If after going all through, like through that entire experience, you still feel like that does not reflect the truth of who you are, 
then maybe then it would be advisable to change the name. But I think it, it should be a massive, massive exception and not a rule, especially your first name. Um, I don't, I see maybe under 1% of people, uh, maybe half a percent at max that are meant to even consider changing their first name. Because again, uh, make no mistake, your higher self factored in everything. And your name is the ammunition that you got sent here to face this world with. And it is far from random. Another thing that I wanted to point out, and that is kind of a question from the collective. So I'll just, I guess I'll let the collective ask the question. The question is, if I have a middle name and I've been using that middle name as my first name, um, is that the same thing as rejecting a part of myself? And the answer is absolutely yes. There is a reason why your higher self gave you names in a certain order. Your first name energetically pulls more weight than your middle name. Always. No matter what. Always. Enough so that, you know, in between the two, it's like 70-30. So your first name is 70% of the energy of the two names, right? Like I'm not talking about last name. And 30% would be your middle name. If you are rejecting 70% of the energies that you came with in favor of the 30%, that is a massive reason to examine what is it about your first name that you really hate so much. Because it is not external. You're not hating on an external object. You're hating on a building block of your identity, which always is a hate that is internal and internalized, right? So that would be something really important to examine. I want to take another question from the collective. Anything you guys wanted to know about your names? The question is, for women, is it advisable to have two last names then, because if you get to just keep two, wouldn't you want more energies? The question is yes and no. The thing is, some of the energies can also be conflicting, right? Um, so a lot of women, unless you feel like a massive calling uh, when you get married, it's either better to keep your, you know, it, it's, um, I don't know, double names are tricky. Sometimes they work um, when they're short. Um, obviously, when they're longer, they don't work for logistical reasons, but longer last names carry with themselves a lot of energetic weight, and they become such an integral part of who you are. It's almost like the two last names could start fighting each other uh, because the energies are not created equal. There are some energies in the universe that are opposing energies, um, and so I would probably not recommend keeping both last names as a strategy to amplify your energy because one thing you could uh, inadvertently create is the the tug of war between the two last names. It's possible. Um, so I would say like pick one and stick to it most likely unless you just know and that's like what, I don't know, 2% of the population or so when you just know you're supposed to have a double name. Any other questions uh, from the collective around your name and, and its mystery? Do souls have habits of taking the same name over and over and over again? And thank you for that question. This is such a beautiful question. The answer is absolutely yes. Souls love consistency because in order for you to achieve a meaningful change at the higher self level, you need to repeat certain scenarios over and over and over again to get the depth and the breadth of learning. And so very often, uh, souls would come with the same name over and over and over again until they feel like that energy is fully explored until they feel that that facet of reality is fully integrated inside of them and they feel happy about it. So it's extremely common to come with the same name. The trick of the trade is this. If you picked, or, you, or rather your higher self picked a name that you have carried already in past lifetimes, a big chunk of karma of those past lives is going to be tied to the name as well as a big chunk of your power is going to be tied to the name, right? So it's a double-edged sword, if you will. It's like a Pandora's box. You don't really know what's going to be inside. <laughs> um, so it's advisable. It would be advisable for you in that case, if you have a hunch that you have been called this before, uh, would be to do past life regressions 
on your other avatars or your other incarnations where you had the same name to try to pinpoint what is the shared karma that you specifically carry as it relates to the name, right? Because there may be, I don't know, millions of people called the same name. Like there are maybe millions of people called John, but the specific karma that you are going to be carrying as it relates to John would be correlated to all of the past lives where you were named John. And of course, it would be related to the energies of letters J, O, H, N. So all of this applies. So yes. And in other words, if you've had a traumatic life where you were named the same exact name, you may also have a resistance to your first name or your last name. It doesn't really matter. Just first name is more common. Right. So sometimes you have an aversion to your name and you're like, where is that coming from? It's like not nothing like it's not collective, a collective aversion. It's my individual aversion. And you may find that it is because you've had a traumatic experience where you were called the same name. So there is definitely resistance to your name that can come from past life experiences and memories buried really, really, really deeply in your subconscious. And the way out uh, towards accepting your name would be to do past life regressions and, and dive a little bit deeper. All right, my loves. Well, this is it. Like a quick overview. Again, please let me know in the comments if you would like to have probably a series of videos around the mystery of letters. Sending you a big virtual hug. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.